Hey everybody, Jerry Mitchell here. I've got a really fun video for you. It's on a 300 blackout. So what a 300 blackout is, it's a 5.56 case that is shortened and expanded out to 30 caliber. And that was J.D. Jones's uh, brainstorm. He's made a whole series of subsonic rounds all the way up to 50 caliber. So he's the one that came up with this platform. And through the years, it, it, wind, it winded its way into the modern sporting rifle. So this is a Smith & Wesson, a 16 inch barrel. It's a 300 Blackout, 300 Whisper. And what I have in front of me is some ammunition that I've collected for the video. Uh, Discrete Ballistics sent this machine bullet. It's a, it's a completely machined 188 grain hollow point. Uh, never shot one of these before. Of course, you have the Hornady Sub X, which is a 190 grain bullet. And uh, it's made to expand through any kind of barrier you can think of. It's barrier blind with that red tip on the front. It's, it meets the FBI protocol and uh, pretty unique round. Of course, we have the high speed ammunition. This is a 300 blackout. It's a 110 grain GMX. It's an all gilding metal with a polymer tip. And you can tell by the velocity difference, of course, this is 2285 and the sub X round to be subsonic has to be below the speed of sound. And it's 1,050 feet a second. And going on to the final round here, it's the uh, 300 Whisper Blackout 110 grain VMAX. So that's a 30 caliber, a conventional cup and core varmint bullet. And these are going, that's what I like about the Hornady boxes, they tell you what's going on here, is 30, uh, 2350. So, a big variation in velocity, bullet designs. We got a piece of ballistic gel, and I know what you're thinking. Let's go shoot some. Okay, we're on our back range here. This is my private range. Uh, this is a 188 grain subsonic all machine discrete ballistics ammunition round. It's going to be the first one into the block. I'm going to shoot it on the top right corner. So I'm going to take a position here. Got the safety on. Going to take the flag out. And guys, remember when you chamber a center fire round, keep it pointed at the berm. Just in case something should happen, it's going to be contained. All right, so here we go. We're going to shoot that block top right. There we have it. Let's put a flag in it. Take a look at it. Okay, as you can see, the machine bullet opened up really quick. And let's see how much penetration we got here. We got a piece of a tape measure. So I'm gonna cut a foot and see. So we got 18, about 18 and a half inches, and the bullet stayed in one piece. So, as you can see from the high speed video, it started opening up, had a pretty good wound cavity. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can get him out of there without cutting the finger here. We got two other bullets to shoot and uh, haven't been cut with bullets before. We're gonna try to be a little careful here. Well, like I said, a little. What you wanna remember when we're doing this, this kind of ballistic stuff, there's no clothing or anything on it, no barrier in front of the gelatin. So this is just raw gelatin exposure to the projectile and you can see it opened up uh, three petals just like it was supposed to. That's kind of interesting, yeah. Let's go shoot another one. Okay, the next round of ammunition is the Hornady 190 grain Sub X. It's a subsonic round. It's got the filler on the front. Barrier blind ammunition. So, I'm kind of excited. I haven't shot gelatin with it yet. So, we got the safety on, got the bullet in the mag. We're gonna take the flag out, charge it toward the berm here. Flag out. All right, let's see what the Hornady round will do. 190 Sub X. Let's go ahead and clear it out. Okay, that was the Hornady round. That's the conventional cup and core with the filler in the front. And you can see at 1,080 feet per second, it opened up oh, a couple of inches in. Let's see what we got here for penetration. All right, cut a foot. This is my tape measure. I lost a foot somewhere. It might have been an alligator. All right. <laughs> supposed to measure them after they're dead, not before. All right. <laughs> All right. So we're about 17 inches, so about an inch less. But let's take a look at the... Uh, at the bullet there. I can still see the red tip in it. It did really good. You can actually, I'll tell you what, you got a second. 
I'm kind of excited. We can actually measure the pitch of the rifling from the from the gelatin block here. It's supposed to be a twist in ten. Okay, about that. All right, pretty pretty good. All right, let's dig a bullet out here, guys. Get my trusty blade. So what do you think? 300 blackout. Pretty pretty fun, pretty fun caliber. The whole idea is subsonic when you got a good suppressor on the front with the right ammunition makes it uh, pretty exciting. Okay, so there we have it guys. That's the Hornady 190 Sub-X. It did exactly what it's supposed to do. I'm really impressed at the size of the wound cavity. When you look at it from this perspective, all the cup, all the uh, jacket is already curled back, but as it was going through the block, it's doing the, uh, the mushroom and then it ended up uh, really nice. So. Let's shoot another one. Okay, our third round of ammunition is a 220 grain hollow point subsonic ring nose round. And uh, I'm kind of excited to see what this is going to do. Flag out. Let's go ahead, safety on. And uh, we're going to put this one right in the middle, just a little bit lower. And safety on, pointing towards the berm. We're ready to play. All right. All right, and the test continues. So the 220 ring tip, as you can see, had no expansion. So let's see how far it went. Let's go ahead and cut a foot here. We've got, uh, it's right at two foot at, at the nose of penetration. It's a 220 grain bullet that stayed intact. It went into the secondary block on the bottom here. Let's see if we can salvage it out of there. And Oh yeah, it was nice enough to get right on the bottom. Well, that's very nice of it. I had that plan, by the way. All right, <laughs> so there it is, 220 ring tip, uh, no expansion. But I know what you're thinking. Is that the best you got? I got something better. Okay, next round up, it's a Hornady 110 GMX. It's an all gilding metal. It has a polymer tip on it. It's 110 grade. This is not subsonic. It's doing, according to the box, 2,280 something feet a second. So it's about twice as fast as what we've been shooting. It's a lot more aerodynamic and it's made to, uh, to expand. So let's see what it's going to do. We're going to take the flag out. Got the safety on. Here we go. Let's shoot a GMX round here. All right. Oh, there we go. Let's go ahead and flag it. I saw it jumping. We are clear, flagged. All right, guys, velocity is your friend. You saw the block react to the shot. That's 2,280 something feet a second. So let's get our tape measure here and see what we did. So we got a foot 10 inches. Okay, pretty cool. And I can see the projectile there. It looks to be exactly intact. Uh, I think it probably saved its complete 110 grain weight here. Let's go ahead and flip him out of there. Oh yeah, look at that dude. Look at there. That's pretty looking. That's about as best you're going to get out of a 110 grain bullet. I'm impressed. Wow. I know what you're thinking. What else you got in the bag? I think I got something to really make this block jump. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, next bullet up is a Hornady 110 VMAX 300 blackout round. So, so what we, uh, it's about 2300 and something feet a second on the box. It's a 110 grain, it's a cup and core bullet. And it's made to expand at relatively low velocity to shoot varmints with. So we got the safety on. And I would just guess out of previous experience with other varmint style bullets, this should make that block dance pretty good. Okay, so. Let's make a dance. Oh. Yeah, a little jump. Yeah, we're clear. <laughs> Let's go ahead and flag it. And we are clear. <laughs> 
As you can see from the high-speed camera, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. It dumped energy within a very short distance. You saw the block react to that 110 grain bullet at about 2350 feet per second. So let's take a look at the, uh, the actual performance. It started to open in less than an inch. So to give you an idea, the total penetration was uh, 14 inches and the bullet fragmented and that's exactly what it's supposed to do. The idea behind a round like this, it reduces ricochet and it also reduces over penetration. So if you wanted to do a blackout in a situation where you wanted the very least amount of penetration, it might be what you're looking for. So all I see left here of the base is just a small part, part of the base here. And let's see if we can get it out to the top without cutting myself. Got a piece of jacket. Got one little shrimp shrapnel. Well, it's actually just a piece of uh, piece of jacket there. So that's about it, guys. As you can see, yep, that is it. Just two little pieces of jacket at the end. As you can see, the bullet fragged completely. Massive energy dump right in the first about six, seven inches of penetration. So, so there you have it, guys. A 300 wisp, a 300 blackout, and a carbine. I used to call it a glorified 30 carbine, but it's actually a lot more flexible. There's a tremendous amount of ammunition out there, so you can tailor this cartridge to exactly what you want to do with it. Mild recoil, of course, with the subsonic rounds, it's very quiet. I've got that set up. I've got feral hogs on the property, so maybe next video we'll have a barbecue, thermal sight. What do you think? Get some.